So now that we have a, a little bit of an understanding of how to make measurements of the, the changing position of objects, we can look at the distance that the object traveled, we could look at its, its displacement, we could look at the change in displacement. We have a lot of tools under our belt in terms of thinking about how things have moved from one location to another, a bunch of different ways of, of sort of analyzing their motion in terms of these two new properties called distance and displacement. So now let's actually talk about the motion itself. So when we think about the motion, we're typically going to be referring to either the speed or the velocity of the object. And in the way that distance and displacement were related to each other, speed and velocity are related to each other through those definitions of distance and displacement. So our definition of speed is the rate of change of distance. Now, when it is simply stated as the rate of change, it's implied that it means per unit time. That is to say that it's the rate of change of distance as time is going on, as time is moving or time is flowing. Now, in the case of speed, since it's based on distance, and distance was a scalar property, that means that speed is also a scalar property. That means that it's always positive. Now, the letter that we choose for speed and for velocity is the same letter. Now, I hope you recognize we can't use the letter S because we've already used the letter S to represent the distance. So we cannot use the letter S to also represent the speed. So what we do is we use the same letter for both speed and velocity, and that is the letter V. So speed being the rate of change of distance, that would be the distance that you traveled. Per means divide. So V would be the distance over the time. Now you'll also sometimes see D over T. That's a very common notation. So, as I said, it depends on the textbook. Some books will use the letter D. Other books prefer to use the letter S. If it's a, a very, um, or a relatively high level, if it's somebody who's going on to be a physics major or to be an engineer, they're probably going to use S because calculus. Um, it turns out that in calculus, the letter D actually represents one of the mathematical operators. In fact, it's really the, the major mathematical operator in um, calculus. And so as a result of that, they tend to not use D if they're books uh, for people who are going to go on to use calculus. In our case, this is a non-calculus-based class, so we may occasionally from time to time use the letter D to represent time. And really important to note that since this is a scalar property, this is always positive. It is never a negative uh, property. Now, velocity has a very similar definition. It's also a rate of change per unit time, but in this case, it's the rate of change of displacement. And remember, displacement usually is not the same as the value of the distance. It's not impossible. It could be the same. They could be the same, um, the distance that you travel and the, the change in displacement. But really important to notice that it's the change of displacement. It's the change in distance. That's what speed and velocity are based on. Now, in order to separate this V from that V, we use what is commonly known as the vector hat notation. Um, you can actually draw just a regular arrow, so you could draw both sides of the arrowhead. But generally speaking, you'll see in most books that they draw, it's sort of like a half arrow. And that symbol above means that this is the vector version of it. So speed and velocity are, are very closely related to each other. And to separate the two, we put the vector symbol over V uh, in order to, rep to indicate that it's the velocity version of this rather than the speed version. Now, the equation is a little bit different because, remember, S is for distance instead of uh, S. Since we're talking about the rate of change of displacement and it's the change in displacement, we would use delta X over delta T. So this is our, our formula, and let's actually put a box around these two formulas. Okay, now you also, what we could do is essentially to sort of expand the equation um, by saying that V vector symbol is equal to X minus X naught over T. Or that is to say, we could solve this to say that x was equal to so my final displacement is equal to v times t, 
V times T will give me my change in displacement. Look back over here. If I take the delta T and I put it up here, I get V times delta T, and what does that give me if I multiply the velocity times the change in time? I get the change in displacement. So the VT part is the change in displacement. So if I add the change of displacement to my original displacement, then that would tell me where my final displacement is, is located at. Um, they're all the same equation. These are all the, the same. There's no difference between them. It's just simply a matter of which variable are we looking for. Just because a formula is written as V is equal to delta X over delta T, you shouldn't think that it's always about solving for V. Of course not. We could solve for d the change in X. We could solve for T. Or we could even solve for either of the individuals. I could solve for the final displacement or the initial displacement or the change in displacement. It really depends on the problem and, and what you're being asked for. In some cases, it's advantageous to have the change in displacement. Other times, I might look for the actual final displacement or be looking for the velocity or the, or the time. And similarly with the speed equation. So since we have the two equations, let's take a look at an example that will allow us to um, sort of analyze both of the, the motions. Um, so we're going to have somebody travel, who somebody, I'm sorry, who is 35 kilometers north of the origin. We'll let him travel 55 kilometers to the south, then head back 75 kilometers to the north, and we'll complete this entire trip in two hours. So let's start by looking at the origin. And we'll put somebody 35 kilometers to the north. There's our origin. And we will have this person travel 55 kilometers to the south. Fifty-five kilometers to the south would be minus fifty-five. And then from that point, and I'm going to put it out here to the side so it'll be a little easier to see, we'll have him travel seventy-five kilometers back to the north. Okay, so we started north of the origin, but we traveled south by 55, and then traveled 75 back to the north. And the question is asking us for both the speed and also for the velocity of the trip. So let's start with speed. So for speed, we're going to need to know S, the distance. And in this case, the 35 is irrelevant because that's his initial displacement. What we want to know is when they started moving, how far did they move? So he traveled 55 to the south, 75 to the north, and really important that you remember, these are always positive distances. Distance is always positive. It doesn't care whether you traveled north or traveled south, east, west, north, or south. It's all positive when you're thinking about the speed because again, speed is based on the distance, and distance is always positive. So the speed, or sorry, the distance for this guy is 130 kilometers, the time. Now, one of the things you're going to see, and it may seem kind of sloppy, it, technically the equation, sorry, let's go back up here, is delta t, the change in time. However, let me point out that if no time changes, then obviously nothing has happened. So it's, it's a little sloppy. Technically, we should write delta t every time that we, we deal with the time, but it's very common among physicists, and you'll find mathematicians think that physicists are a little bit lazy because we oftentimes drop the delta t off. It is actually delta t, but we drop it off because obviously if no time goes by, then we have no problem. So just to make the notation a little bit simpler, a little bit cleaner, not have to carry that delta t around all the time, you'll notice that when I drew, wrote it up here, I, I didn't write the delta t all the time. Um, just to make the, the equations a little easier to deal with, oftentimes we don't use the delta t because it's implied that when we talk about time, that obviously time has changed. Um, and so in this case, we want to look for v without the vector symbol. Well, v without the vector symbol would be s over t, and so in this case it would be 130 divided by 2.0. I'm actually not going to write the, uh, the units. I tend to not write the units when I'm solving the problem because it, it just makes the algebra, algebra very cluttered, and it's, the crucial thing is just to make sure that when you go in the end that you get the right units for this guy. So in this case, v would be 65 
and our units for this would be kilometers over hours so that's kilometers per hour and that's our final answer okay now part B asks about the velocity so let's do part B underneath here so in this case I want delta X now I want you to really notice that when I was calculating the the distance to in order to get the speed I looked at the 55 and the 75 now in the case of um, the change in displacement I don't really need to look at those two what I need to look at is where was I at the end and where was I in the beginning so you know that this is going to be x minus x naught so the final displacement and the initial displacement well the initial displacement I know that's really easy that was plus 35 and so the minus sign comes from the the formula I'm going to subtract positive 35. What I need to know is where was I in the end? So let's go back and take a look. I started at 35. I went 55 to the south. So at this point, I'm now at negative 20. Then I traveled 75 back to the north. So starting from negative 20 and traveling 75 to the north is going to put me at plus 55. So we can write plus 55 in here and that gives us a change in displacement of 20 kilometers. Now, one thing that has not changed is the time was still the same no matter which one that we looked at. So that's 2.0 hours and I am looking for now the velocity not the uh, speed. So in this case, let me move out to the right here V is equal to delta x minus divided by delta t, sorry. And so that's going to be 20 divided by 2.0 to give me 10 kilometers per hour. And that's our final answer.